Hey guys, uh, I just want to do a quick example of using the spline tool as guides for a loft. I went over this a bit in class, uh, but just wanted to give a video on it to have a little bit un better understanding in case people miss some things. Um, so it's going to be relatively simple. I'm just going to start off by creating a sketch on the front plane and I'm just going to create a center point circle around the origin and let's just say I make this four inches in diameter and then I also I'm going to create a second plane um, to loft too so that's going to be parallel with the front plane and then let's flip the direction and set an offset distance of I'm just kind of making stuff up here, let's say five inches. Okay, so once we have that, I'm going to select plane one and create a sketch on there. We'll get normal to it. I'm going to create another center point circle and again go on the origin and this time I'll just make this, uh, we'll say two inches. So now if I look, I should have a 2 inch diameter circle and a 4 inch diameter circle uh, on two different planes. And now what I want to do is uh, use the spline tool and create some uh, guides for the loft. So I'm going to create another sketch and I switch to the top view. I'm going to sketch on the top plane and I'm going to use the spline tool here. Um, this is a tool I don't use very often. I've used it, I think, maybe twice in my career. Um, and I told my students it is the one tool that I am okay with it being undefined. Um, everything else I want you to define completely. The spline tool I'm okay leaving undefined. So I'm just going to kind of sketch this out. So what happens is that you can put a series of points that will all be connected um, and the, the, the line basically just bends around those points. Um, and I can hit escape when I want to end. So if I hit escape, it goes to the last point that I clicked. So I'm going to create one kind of on the left side of the origin, and then I'm going to create another one over here. These don't have to be um, perfect. They're just kind of random, showing you what the spline can do. So now if I want, I can hit escape again to deselect the tool. I can go back and I can move these points around if I want to change the shape a little bit, uh, adjust things. At either end point, we see there's some white dots. If I click on those, these handles move the tangency of the end points. So this final point is going to be tangent with this line. And the further I pull this out, further I pull this handle out, the longer it's going to be tangent to that line. So if I make it really short, um, it's only going to be tangent for a small period. If I make this handle really long, the tangency will continue for a longer time, or longer distance. Okay, so now that I have these, um, I want to connect them to the edge of these circles. So what I can do, since these circles I created are not actually in the top plane, I'm going to use the Project and Convert tool. And if I click on each of these circles, it's just going to project a line straight across um, that is now in the top plane. So I can use this line in my sketch. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Escape. And then I want to make both of these construction lines so I can click on both of the lines I just created. And then I'm going to go up to the construction tool. And we see those are now construction lines as they are dashed. And they will not be used in our sketch. So I can deselect that tool. Um, I'm going to hit spacebar to deselect the two lines. Oops. I need to go back there. There we go. Hit control Z to go back. Um, and these are now again construction lines. And now I just want to make these points coincident with the end points on these construction lines. 
that'll make it um, um, coincident with this circle and then we can use them as guides for a loft. So I'm going to use the coincident tool and I can individually click on these. Those two points will be coincident. We go here and here. We can make that coincident. Uh, this bottom left point. And now this bottom right point, we can make all of these coincident. And I'm going to hit escape to get out of the coincident tool. And I think what I did here is, okay, no, that looks okay. I thought I had created a uh, constraint somewhere in here. I did. So I accidentally, when I was creating this spline, I created this horizontal constraint without really noticing it. So I'm just going to go and delete that. Now I can move this handle around however I want. Okay. I'm just going to put this as kind of a, a random shape. And again, like I said, I'm okay with the splines being undefined. Um, that is probably the one tool I'm okay with having undefined. So I'm going to accept that sketch. And now I want to use the loft tool. So we've seen this before. Um, it's just asking for the two different profiles to loft it between. And I'm going to select these two circles. And we see a, a cone shape like we have before. But now I'm going to select this guides and continuity um, option. Now it's asking for the guides to use. I'm just going to click on the two splines that we created. So this is going to think for a second. And the edge of that spline or the edge of that loft is now following that spline. Um, so again, I just did it kind of randomly. And if you notice, it's only in the top plane is where it follows those splines. If I look on a side view, it's still got a basic cone shape. Um, so you could add more uh, guides in here, however you want. If you want to go on the right plane and add more guides, you can do that as well. Um, so I'm just going to hit the check mark there. I want to show you a couple things, or at least one thing that will create an error. If I go back to sketch three, and I'm going to edit this. This is our splines. Splines don't like intersecting. So if I grab this point and pull it way out here, then I grab this point and pull it down here, and it makes this little loop, um, it doesn't like that. So you get an error that says some of the geometry intersects itself or is degenerate. Um, so that just means basically this is unusable. It's intersecting itself. Oops, get rid of that. And... Um, yeah, so that's going to create an error if you do that. If you're using a spline as a guide for a loft, if you make a really tight point or a really tight corner, like if I do something like this, I'm probably going to get an error when I try to create my loft. So if I try this, we'll see what happens. If my loft will regenerate. Um, so it did in that case. So sometimes if you create your points uh, too close together or, um, like I said, if they intersect, your loft will not be able to generate. So that's it. Um, that's how we can use some splines. We can use them for a lot of uh, different uh, shapes and things like that. Um, but that's kind of the example I showed in class. So hopefully that helps. Thanks.